This is yet another quote from our own Steve Weintraub's conversation with the one and only Kevin Feige. And this particular quote has a little something to do with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, an update on the status of the project and also specifically whether Marvel has encountered resistance in trying to hire a new director for the film. is isn't really you know, necessarily talk about that specifically. But when Steve posed that question, here's what Feige said. I mean, when it was pushed back, it was pushed back, meaning the release date, because it's not coming out. Although we're never, we're, we've never announced a release date, actually, but it was going to happen sooner rather than later, initially, of course. Outside of knowing that we're going to use James Gunn's draft, we have been focusing on other projects. So, I mean, I read that quote as... You know, it's it's on the table. We still have James Gunn's draft, but the whole thing is being put on the back burner. Is that how you see it, Jay? Yeah, of course it is, because they want people to stop talking about it. Because every time the, the discussion of who potentially can direct comes up, everybody's like, oh, there's speculation, speculation. I don't think Ke- Kevin Feige and Disney want us to think about any of that anymore. Let's focus on what we got going on. All the, the phase four we're building in our Marvel Universe will get to the Guardians if we get to them. Either way, you'll see them being utilized in various other films. That's pretty much how he's going to do it. Someone just sent me a screen grab of the Frozen Lower Third. Adam? Adam Smith, I'm looking Uh-oh. at you. Oh, Lord. <laughs> going to have you, a giggle fit in the middle of the story now? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to leave it to you guys to scroll back and check that out. It <laughs> is uh, interesting. So that's where we stand on Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, per his quotes right now. Haley, is the way you read this as it's on the back burner now and it's never going to happen? I wouldn't go that far. I could see that being a possibility, especially like just with uh, Taika Waititi being like, I don't want that job. Like, yeah, I yeah. feel like a lot of directors <laughs> are going to be like, yeah. no, 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 that's, that's James Gunn's. I don't want that. Um, but also everybody, you know, there are filmmakers who might not be at that high of a point in their career who really want and need mm-hmm. a gig like that. So yeah. there's always someone who will take the job. I just... I don't know if they're going to be able to find the kind of talent they're looking for right now for that job. Let's say uh, James Gunn's Suicide Squad comes out, maybe people aren't feeling so touchy about it, then a director might be more inclined to step into mm-hmm. that position. Because James Gunn's fine, right? He's moved on to another franchise, it's all worked out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think we'll get it soon. I don't necessarily think it's gone for good, especially with the... Um, the enthusiasm Chris Pratt recently demonstrated for the script, saying how wonderful it is. I, when you have a script that good, and I have no doubt in my mind that it's that good, knowing what James Gunn did with the last two films, do you want to throw that away? Okay, as you were talking about Chris Pratt's quotes, I believe that came from the MTV piece, right? Yes. They they seemed very, you know, well thought out and well planned to me. So I was going to say no, no, no to that. But the idea that you bring up about having a really great script and not seeing it through, that to me is something that I think could motivate the cast to at least get his vision made, even if it isn't with him at the helm. And and that's another issue when it comes to the cast. Where does everybody stand, let's say, after Endgame? Is Dave Bautista still going to be Drax? We all know how vocal he was after James Gunn was fired. Zoe, uh, Zoe Saldana, she's got all these Avatar films coming up. So it's really going to be, what are we going to do? Are we just going to focus on Chris Pratt, Vin Diesel, and Bradley Cooper (laughs) and build around them? This doesn't sound out of the realm of possibility. When I look at Guardians 3 as a straightforward sequel to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 with the same group of Guardians, in my brain, I say this is never happening. I Mm. feel like there's too much negativity in the air. And we're also not talking about, like, you know, a small production that the studio can hope, you know, gets beyond the bad buzz and actually pops again. We're talking about a significant financial investment where people, cast and fans included, are bummed that James gun someone with a super specific style and voice is not coming back it seems like a very risky move to me and the only way to sidestep that risk and give it a fresh feel and a fresh feel that feels like like it was necessary i think is something that the comics have done when you change up the members of the group Mm -hmm. if they change them up enough and this is a different iteration of the guardians i think that's where we could see a good director feel comfortable stepping in but that still calls into question james gunn's original script, which one way or the other is being tweaked. And you have to figure out a way to set up that transition. 
because again, this is all dependent on Avengers Endgame. You don't want to start hype, using your theory, Perry. You don't just want to start Guardians three with a whole new group of Guardians from the galaxy of the galaxy, and you don't know who any of these people are. You have to you have to have that transition. So Endgame would play into that if they were going to do Guardians three, which, like I said, they're not. I have a theory that is so far fetched, and I told you all before we started filming. Well, we already know we love theories at this table. <laughs> Uh, basically, for everyone's wondering, if Suicide Squad 2 does well, look for Disney to finally, if possibly say, we sorry, we need this. Can you come do this? And as I said before we and even started when it. you brought that up, I, I think that is highly unlikely unless there's a major regime change at, at Disney proper, yeah, not Disney at Marvel. Yeah, not Marvel. Disney. Yeah. Because Marvel wants him. And that's the thing, Marvel Studios, they were all like, let's keep him. Kevin Feige fought for him. Mm -hmm. And so I think the the day and age, and yes, the, the hierarchy has to change. Also, the, the time right now that we're living in has to change in a sense. We are in a very much of a testy time where people are held being held accountable for old things that they should have been held accountable for. If we move forward from that, and not in a negative way, then that potentially can open the door for him to come back. Hmm. Theories. I could, I could see it. I don't know. I I see what you're saying that they they the powers that be as they be right now would be too stubborn to be like we we messed up to that level because that's a huge like thing to admit you screwed up. Although admitting admitting you were wrong and, and showing some sign thing. of forgiveness is is nice. It's and I think lovely. this industry could maybe use a little this more. Is not of that. what corporations tend to do. <laughs> however, nope, more of a person thing. <laughs>